Hi everyone, I'm Alan and welcome back to Healthy Kitchen 101. Today, we're going to be looking at the Oster French Door Digital Convection Toaster Oven. It has a sleek aesthetic design and an extra large capacity. However, it's not the most budget-friendly product. So, the remaining question is, how good is its performance? To find out, we apply our four curated tests to see how well the oven actually performs. Our tests include toasting two batches of four slices of bread back to back, baking a nine-inch pizza, roasting a three-pound whole chicken, and air frying 12 ounces of frozen fries. But first, let's dive into the design. Design, aesthetic only. The Oster is one of the largest capacity ovens we have tested, over 40 liters. However, it lacks the premium features often seen in the same price range, including having more than three rack positions or a non-stick interior, like for example, the Preview Smart Oven Pro. Features worth mentioning are good ventilations on all sides and the upper heating elements. So basically, the oven's design is mostly good for aesthetic reasons only. 6.7 out of 10. Performance, medium heat only. Test number one, toast or toasting bread. The first thing we need to do is make sure all eight slices of bread are roughly the same weight. We then place the first batch of four on the wire rack and slide them into the Oster. We began our toast test on the Oster with the default toast level four and got pretty good results right off the bat. On this setting, 7 minutes and 25 seconds on the timer, the four pieces of bread on the upper tray were toasted to a nice golden brown color. However, the color became dark towards the edges, especially where the bread was less dense. Additionally, a large portion of the bottom right piece of toast was significantly lighter, possibly indicating a cold spot in the cooking chamber. With such unevenness, we could only score the surface color a 6 out of 10, despite the overall golden brown hue. Unfortunately, the dark edges produced a bitter taste, preventing it from getting higher than a 6 out of 10 from our chef. We toasted the second batch of 4 slices immediately after the first. We chose level 4 again, whereupon the oven automatically calibrated the timer to 5 minutes and 31 seconds. Since the oven was already hot, the aforementioned cold spot became less apparent. The toast was not as crispy nor dry as the first batch, which made it more suitable for sandwiches and omelets. However, the burnt edges were still a problem, so the oven received one final 6 out of 10 for consecutive usability. If you want better results for the second batch, we recommend decreasing the toast level by one. Regretfully, while level 4 was the best toast level, it didn't score high on our benchmark scale, only 6 out of 10. Test number 2, Baking Pizza. For this pizza test, we didn't choose the oven's 400 degrees F pizza preset because it didn't match our pizza test requirement of 450 degrees F. Instead, we chose turbo convection as a suitable setting for baking pizza. To conduct the test, we first need to preheat the Oster to an internal temperature of 450 degrees F. It took around 17 minutes, longer than the average 15 minutes. After reheating, we placed the baking tray and the pizza at the upper tray level. We were impressed that the oven only took 6 minutes to bake a 9-inch thick crust meat pizza. According to our accumulated data on the average toaster oven performance, this deserved a 9 out of 10. Unfortunately, the oven lacks the high-intensity heating capability needed to crisp a crust effectively in such a short period of time. Consequently, parts of the crust bottom stuck to the grooves of the baking tray and the surface had a light golden color. So the score was only 5.5 out of 10. We had to stop the baking because some of the meat and parts of the cheese started charring. It was a shame that the cheese didn't completely melt before this, so we could only give the toppings a 6 out of 10. We were able to prevent the toppings from burning and the potential bitter taste. However, the crust and the topping weren't good enough for the taste of the pizza to get a score higher than 5.5 out of 10. 
from our chef. The final results were not so favorable, scoring only 6.4 out of 10 on our testing scale. Test number three, roasting a whole chicken. The first thing we need to do for this roasted chicken test is preheat the oyster to an internal temperature of 350 degrees F, which took roughly 11 minutes and 50 seconds. We placed a three pound chicken belly up on the upper rack level and flipped it after the first 40 minutes. After one hour and 10 minutes, the skin reached an acceptable roasted color, scoring a seven out of 10 for cooking time. Our chef surmised that the further roasting wouldn't result in better skin caramelization. Thus, we stopped roasting to avoid overcooking the meat and inadvertently lowering the total score. The skin had an appetizing golden color except for the size of the two drumsticks, which were a little lighter in color. Compared to other benchmark tests, the skin only crisped slightly, indicating the heating elements and convection system to be less than ideal. The results were good, enough for a 7.5 out of 10. The oven maintained an ideal temperature long enough to evenly cook an entire chicken throughout. We measured the internal temperature of the chicken and it was 181 degrees F. This was very surprising and almost spot on with the recommended 165 degrees F to 180 degrees F by the USDA, thus earning a whopping 9.8 out of 10 for doneness. Interestingly, the meat came out so tender that the bone simply fell off as we tried to carve the chicken. If the skin was crispier, the chicken would have received a higher than an 8 out of 10 for taste. The spacious interior of the oyster seemed a key factor in our whole roasted chicken test, scoring an impressive 8.1 out of 10. Test number four, baking or air frying fries. To prepare for our oven baked fries test, we need to preheat the oyster to 400 degrees F, and it takes quite long, 16 minutes and 30 seconds. When the temperature is reached, we take 12 ounces of frozen fries out of the freezer and spread them evenly onto the baking pan. We then slide it onto the upper tray level. After the first 10 minutes, we give the fry a toss to make sure they brown evenly. After 30 minutes, the fries show no significant change in color, where the test time limit was 25 minutes. Therefore, we had no choice but to stop baking and give the fries a 0 out of 10 for cooking time. Most fries had a pale color as if they were air-dried instead of air-fried. Some small pieces had a light golden color, but that wasn't enough to score higher than 5 out of 10. Texture-wise, the fries were soft but dry on the outside, barely enough for a 5.5 out of 10. All things considered, the only silver lining was that the fries were actually cooked, so our chef gave them a 5 out of 10 for taste. For this test, the oyster was disappointing, scoring only 4.1 out of 10. Our reasoning was the poor size ratio of the cooking chamber to the oven's power output. The oven wasn't able to maintain a high enough temperature for baking frozen fries. Overall, for roasting, which doesn't require high heat, the oyster did well. However, it took time to reach higher temperatures. Additionally, it didn't perform well with toast, pizza, and especially french fries that require higher temperatures for longer. In conclusion, the oven was only good at performing on medium heat, 6.4 out of 10. Usability could be improved. While the Oster French door is straightforward to use, it lacks the premium features expected of similarly priced ovens, including light and convection toggles, as well as safety mechanisms. Overall, the oven's usability could be improved, 6.4 out of 10. In conclusion, the Oster French Door Digital Convection Toast Oven is one of the largest capacity ovens we've tested. Even so, its sleek, elongated design fits spaces well, and the polished stainless steel casing is aesthetically pleasing in any kitchen. Performance-wise, however, this oven is mostly good for slow roasting and baking sweets, not sizzling hot dishes. Furthermore, it essentially lacks premium design and usability features often seen in competitively priced toaster ovens. We gave this oven an overall score of 6.5 out of 10, and it unfortunately didn't make it to our top lists. If you're interested in reading up on all the tidbits of our testing on the Oster, head over to our article on healthykitchen101.com.
If you enjoyed the video, please consider like and subscribe for future uploads from our channel. If you have any questions on this toaster oven or suggestions on what we should review next, let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!